I've got my rafters up on the sawhorses here. These are all set in order in which uh, I'll set them on the building. I just stack them up here in pairs and I'll just be able to come to the next set that's on the horses and that will be the next set that actually goes on the building. And I've got more down here all paired up and ready to go. I don't know that I'll get them all up today. I'll get some of them up. See, I've got the first set of rafters up. These are the barge rafters. And I knew that this set would be the hardest pair to set. But I got them up there and they're bolted down. We'll go up there and have a look. I was going to show you how I actually plumb these barges. It's a pretty much a poor boy setup, but it works really well. I learned this from my log building buddies where we hung, we hung a string right at the peak and put a weight on the end of it. And in this case, it's just an empty jug of uh, bar oil that I put some water in to give it some weight. And I have another string across the bottom on the outside. It's attached to the outside of the uh, rafters down at the bottom just above the plate. And I can lean the pair of rafters in. And when that string that's hanging vertically tied to the weight just touches the cross string, then I know that I've got this set of barge rafters plumb. And then I can just put a, a brace on it as I've got here, just screwed it to the top of the, the rafter and down to the plate, just out of the way of where I'll set the gable rafters. I couldn't get my hoist out there far enough. I couldn't come all the way up to the D wall. This is as far as I could get with the hoist. I've got a board screwed to the floor there to uh, keep it from rolling too far. I had to have an area to be able to climb up and down and these uh, temporary floorboards are just cantilevered out and I didn't dare put any more weight on it, more than what I weighed. But I was able to get it up here, and I just set it on top of D-Wall. And I set it on top of these blocks here. I screwed them down to the plate, and I was just able to slide it just a little bit of it at a time across there to I could get it out. And I kept the hoist strapped to it, even though I had to keep letting cable out so that I could keep it perpendicular. I was able to slide it out and just set it off the end of that block and set it right on its, its layout and bolted it down. But I've got it up there and it's, I've got the, the anchor bolt in it and I don't think you could pull it off. It's there. Got my peg in the peak, it's half lapped. I've got the gable rafters set up here for the D wall and I've got a two before with a layout on it at 12 feet and that just lines up with the, with the, uh, outside edge of the seat cut and I've got it screwed on there good and as I raise this pick it up at the hoist that'll keep the rafter spread apart still on the 12 foot uh, width of the building. Up here at the peak I've got the rafter set I've got the, the half lap I've actually got one screw here and another one right here just to hold it there until I get finished with it and I've, I've put a clamp on it top and bottom and since I'm kind of downhill with everything, I had to put some wedges under my one rafter here to hold it up. And I clamped it together. And I'll put another screw in right here and right here. And then I can take the clamp off and I can drill for the peg that I'll put in there. I'm using inch and a quarter oak pegs. To lay out for the peg, I'm just going to measure from the very peak to the underneath sides of the rafters there where they join together, and I have eight and five eighths. So I'm gonna mark that at four and five sixteenths. Make sure I've got that right. Yep, make a little starter hole so I don't slip. I'm using a double spur bit. It's getting harder to find those around here. I think I actually found this one in Pennsylvania. But I'm gonna do the same little trick to keep this going square in, I'm going to just get it started. And I'm holding my speed square up there. Make sure I'm in line that way. And in line that way. Check this again. Okay. off just a little bitty bit, but I don't think it's going to matter too much.
Now I don't want that to punch out on the other side and leave a frazzled hole. So I'm going to get another bit, another inch and a quarter spade bit come in from the underneath side. Just to finish that up, give it a clean hole all the way. I have my pegs cut. Well, actually, I've cut two pegs here. Uh, this one will be for a, a different pair. It's a little bit longer and it will go through and I like to let it set up or stick out on either side about five eighths of an inch. And I like to do a little detail. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up. I like to take my utility knife and just kind of cut a little facet in there. And for some reason I've caught on to just doing a star, just a five point star. Now since this is a gable pair and these rafters actually will be completely covered up, if I let that we used a peg like this on this gable, I would end up having to cut that off. So I went ahead and just cut one that's short and I kind of chamfered the end of it a little bit to make it a little easier to drive. And what I've done, I've coated these with anchor seal that seems to lubricate it just a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to drive. Let's see how well this thing goes in. Finish this up with my hammer here. Yeah, that'll hold that together. Now I'll go ahead and put another screw in between these two here and the two on the ends. I've learned a lesson. Uh, I've went ahead and put the one in the center in, and then when I drill this hole here, I would hit my screw and I'd have to stop and sharpen my bit. So I've learned to just put one on either side and then come back and put this one in. I'm just going to share this with you. What we now commonly call a peg, from what I have read in my, I think it was in my Roy Underhill books, I've got all of the books that he's written, that these originally were called a trunnel. And I think that uh, is a derivative of tree nail. And there were people that this was their business. They made these. They turned them on a lathe, uh, probably a foot-powered spring pole lathe of some sort. And they would take their turning lathes into the woods and they would make these, and these people that did this were called a trundler. Now, I'm not a trundler, but I've made quite a few of these where I couldn't get the size that I needed, and I've had to actually turn them out on a turning lathe because I wasn't that fast at it. In raising these rafter pairs, I know that, that I can't strap really where I want to to be able to pick them up. Uh, with the extra two feet on the the overhang, there's two feet of height, and my hoist is not tall enough to pick that up over that, and I had designed my hoist so that I could actually pick these up and still be able to, at the peak of it, go underneath the underneath side of the rafters where they join together. So I'm doing the best that I can. I came down four feet from the underneath side of the rafters and I screwed this block on. I've got my strap set on the lower side of it and a bite on both sides and uh, got my hoist hooked to it. Now I know when I get up there, I get it up there nearly to the top, I'll have to pick up uh, this end that will set actually over on seawall. I'll have to pick it up over the top of the plate. It's not heavy because it, it'll teeter-totter uh, real easy. So it's not like I'm picking up a lot of weight to do that. But here we go. Let's see if we can get it up there. While I still have my two before screwed on there and still strapped to the hoist, I'm going to go ahead and drill and anchor this with my lag bolt.
I'm using a ratchet socket because I don't want to depend on that impact driver to do the last little bit of torque. I'm actually holding this pair of rafters, the gable rafters, an inch in from the outside of the building. I'm going to be using uh, one inch in thickness of uh, styrofoam insulation board on the outside of the gable when I frame it in. And then when I put the siding on, I'll let it go down over the outside edge of the top half load. Now I can take this uh, two before off that I had on there as a spreader, take my straps down and go for another one. I've got one peg left and I need three. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just drill for the peg holes. I can put the pegs in after I get it up, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the other screw in the middle between the two, and then I'll put a clamp, a couple blocks and a clamp on it so that I can raise it. I think that'll hold it together. And I'll have to set two pairs without the peg, but I'll, I'll have the hole drilled and after I get some more pegs, I'll. I'll be able to put them in. So I'm just going to save this peg back because I'm going to use it on the barge. It'd be a little bit difficult to get up there and drive a peg in on the barge since it is out from the, the wall. I wouldn't have just a whole lot to stand on there. I'll have to remember to take that screw and this one over here that you can't see out because it's right where the peg would go. But I'll put a, a clamp back on there and I should hold it together while I raise it. I'm going to put the traditional evergreen bow I always put these on the last pair of rafters that I set. Now there's a lot of stories that I've heard about doing this. It's kind of a neat tradition. And I think the reasons vary from location to location. I've heard one story that uh, you took something from the woods, from the forest, and you built something out of it, that could be what it really stands for. This actually came off of a tree that my daughter planted, so it's pretty special. Having the rafters up seems to change the whole perspective of the size. It's just one of those things that, uh, that happens. It makes it feel so much bigger. We'll go down and get a view from down there. This is one of my 
favorite views of the cabin after the rafters are up. As I mentioned earlier, it gives it a little bit different uh, perspective. The size even seems to change. I know it's got some height to it, but there will be a wraparound porch that will go from B wall all the way across the front and then around on the D wall side. There'll be three sides to the porch and that will lower the looks of the height. It seems awful tall right now, but when the porch is on and the roof is on the porch, it seems to change the whole thing and it brings it back into uh, what is really nice to look at as far as the size of everything and the height of everything. I know there's been some comments on in past videos of the height of the piers, but I've got it up high enough to where I can store things under there. I can uh, actually, I want to build a rack under there to where I can put some fresh sawn lumber under there and, and air dry it. It'll be out of the sun and kind of cool. 